Thank you. Charlie Angus. Um, I really thank you for this, and I'm, I'm maybe going off form here in a committee, but I think I'll ask my question to the chair okay. uh, as, a, as a guest. Um, I've been a member of Parliament for 15 years. I've been in all manner of committee hearings. I've seen positive, I've seen negative, I've seen reluctant. I have never been in a set of hearings where getting basic answers from people who know better uh, has been so difficult. I've never been in committee hearings where people have had to watch testimony and give us live messages saying they're not telling you the truth. Uh, I find that very concerning and part of my concern is, is that they know we're, we're generalists. My main job as a member of parliament is getting Mrs. O'Grady's heat turned back on in her flat in the winter. Uh, if I do that then I've done my job. Um, and so we have to ask extremely precise questions but the more precise questions we ask the further away we get from the source because we get dragged down further and further down the well. So I put it to you chair that Facebook sent someone very knowledgeable to everyone around this room. I didn't know who Mr. Allen was. I didn't know that he was a, uh, you know, a British parliamentarian. But the words that we're dealing with were always on their turf. But they today sent someone on our turf, which is the turf of parliament. And when I see our witness use the word contempt and deceitful, I find that very, very disturbing. So I would put it to you, Chair, um, as I would if we were in the Canadian parliament, that if Mr. Allen misrepresented facts, and I'm not all that concerned about whether it was this point of a detail or that point of a detail, but given the, the gravity of the situation, given the extraordinary efforts of legislators from around the world who came here, that if we were misled, and perhaps Mr. Sultani could give us the, very, the specifics on that, that they are now on our turf. And if they're showing contempt and deceit to our parliaments, uh, that that, ha that is worth considering and making a finding, and so I would put that to you, Chair. Yeah, well, no, that's that's uh, duly noted. I think we've you know, we've uh, recorded what was said. I think based certainly on the evidence we've just heard, that we're in a position to follow up on that and you know, yeah. back back to Facebook to ask them to explain the discrepancies between the evidence that we've heard and. You know, I think we could certainly take that further with regard to Richard Allen's evidence and, and the misleading nature of some of the answers that he's given. But it also underlines how important it is for us to gain access to written documents and materials from within the company as well, because then we've got the unambiguous truth, which is why you know, we went to such lengths last week to try and secure these documents, because I think that, that gives you, uh, I must admit, the picture that paints is much closer to what Mr. Sultani has told us than it was to what Richard Allen had to say this morning. Thank you. Uh, sorry, did you want to comment? Okay, just one yeah. quick comment. So I think that's a very astute observation. Um, but one of the challenges in this space with regards to, say, our terms and their terms is that we now have terms that um, didn't exist before, status updates and apps and, you know, APIs, right? And so I think the difficulty exists in this the, because it's so technical and it's so nuanced that the difficulty in making things crystal clear. And, and remember, it's not like a, a life cycle of a, a software is fixed in time now, right? Uh, code is constantly updated. So to say what your app was doing yesterday, it was, there was probably three different code updates yesterday. So over the course of the day, it might have done three different things, right? So I think part of the key here is in addition to um, discovery and having a great deal of documents and auditing is to have technical resources on hand to you all and I'm sure you do already, but having more technologists, and you know, I'm, I'm biased, I'm a technologist, but having those technologists that can sit with you and analyze those documents and ask those questions directly, right? So prior to 2010, the FTC didn't have technologists. They would hire experts when a case went to court, but for, for most matters, they didn't have in-house technologists, and they brought on technologists like myself to help them investigate these matters, and I think Congress in the U.S. Is now has a technical fellow program, and I think that's critical for making sure that when these answers are answered precisely, then you can get into the technical realm and ask very specific questions that only have one right answer that they can demonstrate through an API documentation.